you just finished your tour with 16 volt. How was that? Any good stories to share? Oh, it's great. Uh, really, really good tour. Really a uh, good bunch of guys. Um, stories. We always, we always have the most amazing things happen on, on the road. I mean, this time is everything from, you know, the tire exploding about 80 miles per hour in the middle of a uh, 100 degree weather in California to uh, showing up in Sacramento at a club that uh, didn't have a stage. It actually ended up being a, it actually ended up being a great gig. Uh, it was a lot of fun actually. It just had a real like, punk rock element to it. And uh, we played in El Paso and we show up and it's a, it's a bandito bar. So it's like us and a, and a motorcycle gang basically. And, uh, I mean, all the way down to where they're telling us, hey, you should, really shouldn't wear red in here. And, uh, and in, the, in that bar, it was raining outside in El Paso that night, and, uh, it actually rained on stage. The, uh, the roof needed some work, and so, you know, the middle of your set, next thing you know, you're getting, like, splashed on and all that, and just, I'm, I'm standing up there singing, wondering, uh, which one of my guys is going to go up in flames first? You know, I don't have an instrument. It's got a microphone, so I'm pretty safe. But uh, <laughs> just waiting for somebody to catch on fire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, new album is ten tentatively called Beautiful Death, which in a way is a self-titled album. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, now it's it's definitely called Beautiful Death. Okay. Uh, it's settled on. It's done. Uh, yeah, this, this album felt like uh, kind of the... Um, the work that kind of wrapped up everything we've ever done into uh, into one piece, and the, the album's got a real epic vibe to it, and uh, it just seemed like the right time. You know, it just uh, it just felt right, and uh, I'm I'm in love with the album. It's a it's a shorter album than we've done before. It's uh, really to the point. It's like uh, maybe 40 minutes long or something, and uh, 10 or 11 tracks. But uh, I, I love every song on the album. Real proud of it. Can't wait for. It. I think it comes out in October. Yeah. On both uh, As the Reasons Die and uh, Leave the Gray Sky Black, you worked with Lauren Hoffman. Will uh, we be hearing her on the new album as well? Yeah, briefly. Uh, Lauren was out of the country for a good bit of the recording mm -hmm. on this album, but she will be singing harmony on the chorus of a song called Find Forever Gone that is, uh, we shot a video for. Mm -hmm. And uh, But yeah, you'll hear her there. But, but not as... Uh, She's not as featured as she was on the last two albums, just uh, completely out of uh, lack of time. Right. So. so it sounds like you guys are starting to get more into doing the music videos than you were before. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, actually. And we got a, there's a great director we've been working with, a guy named Eric Thomas Craven, who uh, he did the Earth Angel video and the On the Edge video. And now he's also done the Five Forever Gone video. The guy's just good, and he's, he's easy to work with, and a lot of fun so yeah the videos are long days but uh but they're worth it you know yeah, yeah. i think uh the bands are promoting themselves more visually than ever before mm -hmm. i think with myspace youtube all that stuff you know vampire right. freaks so yeah. it's uh it's kind of important to have those visuals for mm -hmm. fans to latch on to so uh gopal was a founding member of uh bella Marte. was it uh, pretty difficult seeing him go you know when he left it was right mm -hmm. so so i wouldn't say it was difficult it was very odd because uh, he'd been there so long, we've been in a band together for so long, but um, he knew it was time, the rest of the band knew it was time, and uh, so it, it just happened, it's a very natural progression. Um, you know, of course, sad to see anybody leave the band, but at the same time, where we were headed musically and where he wanted to be musically were two very different places. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, but they, Tony Pugh, the guy that uh, filled his shoes, is actually, I've known him since I was in grade school, so... So I've known him longer than anybody in my life aside from my parents. You right. Know? So, so it's very easy to bring in somebody that I'm that close to. Yeah. It didn't yeah. take a lot of uh, effort getting to know the guy. I've heard uh, some of Gopal's new stuff, and it's it's definitely a departure from Belmore. Very much so. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. So I can, I can see where, where he wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. Since Gopal was the only member that really listened to Gath, you know, on a pretty regular basis do you think you'll be getting further away from goth and you know more towards the metal sound that you've been kind of well, heading towards it, it's it's a funny thing like our new album is is a, it's a really dark album mm -hmm. um it's definitely definitely got those metal elements i love that and uh without those the live show is kind of dull in my opinion like i like having aggression on stage yeah. it's it's i feed off of it you know and uh i don't know the, the 
the music is still very melancholy, very melodic, but uh, but as far as goth, I mean, you really think about it, I mean, are there really goth bands out there anymore? Are there yeah. any? You know, our buddies in, like, The Last Dance, I still consider those guys a goth band, yeah. but I really look around and I, I think about, like, you know, traditional goth, and the closest thing that comes to mind for me is, is a band nobody else thinks is goth, and that's the 69 Eyes. To me, they sound like you know, the Sisters of Mercy on Vision thing or something like that. Right. Uh, but I think that goth used to be associated with punk, you know, like a dark, dark, dark version of punk. And now I feel like goth is like right next door to techno. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems like it's electronic music now. Right. And so as far as the modern definition of goth, we are nothing like it. You know, we do use electronics and stuff, but not, not like uh, dance music. But as far as traditional goth, yeah, we've got a lot of those elements on the new album. You know, a whole lot of that driving, dark, dirge sound. Like, but uh, but yeah, as far as modern goth, we we really have nothing in common. There was a part on the MSI episode of BMTV <laughs> that you look like Blanca from Street Fighter when the uh, when the lights turn green. <laughs> I think you had like red or orange hair at the time. Red, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? You know, I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, so now you have to go look it up. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. But I, just for the sake of the interview, I'll say I feel, I feel awful about that. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> you guys have gotten some interesting geek goth type promotions uh, from the poster in the Vampire the Masquerade video game and your appearance in the uh, Wet Moon graphic novel. Yeah. Um, are you guys? Are any of you guys uh, kind of that geek goth kind of people yourselves? I don't know if any of us are really goth. You know, I think yeah. you know I like some goth and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but uh, I, I don't really consider myself anything. Like I don't know. I I, I like comics. Uh, you know, I, I like sci-fi a lot. I'm yeah. A, you know, I'm a horror junkie. Um, I don't know. I mean, as far as geek goth, that I you know I just I don't really associate myself with yeah. it. But. Uh, but, but hell, I'll be the first one to throw on an episode of Battlestar Galactica, you know, so... So you're at least a geek, then. <laughs> at least a geek, maybe, yeah. I'll take I'll take that half, at least, and, yeah. you know, maybe some uh, some goth roots in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this will be the last one here. Um, I saw that you guys, back a while ago, were giving away the Remains van. Whatever happened with that? Did anybody come you pick know, it up, or did you just scrap that, it? I don't know what happened to it, because that was, uh, that was Go Ball. It was, it was his oh, old yeah. van. It was our original touring van. Mm -hmm. And I don't... I can't remember. He was either giving it away or selling it or something, but I don't know what came of it. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's still sitting in a scrapyard somewhere. Or like, but I'll tell you that van, uh, the van, we put a lot of miles on that vehicle, and uh, there was there was a time we were going, we we rarely, rarely, rarely miss shows. We actually, the first show we ever missed was the first time we started touring on a tour bus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we broke down in the middle of the desert with Hansel and Gretel. No, I was going to say, wasn't that the Hansel and Gretel Yes, it was. It was, yeah. it was. it was pretty funny. We, we ended up in the desert eating deep fried burritos yeah. for 36 hours. But uh, it's a long story. But, uh, but um, yeah, the uh, we were playing. We were trying to get to a show in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were about 70 miles from the gig. And the transmission in the van just dropped out. Just dead. And we called AAA, and you know, we have that 100 miles of towing thing. Instead of being towed to a repair shop, we were towed to the gig. <laughs> and we slept in the broken down van that night, not knowing how in the hell we were going to get back to Virginia the next day. Um, we slept in that van and played our show. And uh, the next morning, yeah, we, we rented a car and got home and then had to drive back up to, to fucking Connecticut to pick up the damn van. Yeah. <laughs> After like a you know fifteen hundred dollar repair job, it was uh, it's pretty amazing. So we 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 uh, we sweat and bleed for the fans, you know. <laughs> I guess so. But the fate of the van, I couldn't tell you. No. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Cool. Thanks. Right, thanks. Oh yeah.